There are two distinct but similar sounding cognitive biases that I've written about many times on skeptophilia. The reason is that they're such tenacious barriers to logical thinking. The first is called confirmation bias. It's the tendency to accept uncritically something that fits with our preconceived views. It's why conservative viewers of Fox News and liberal viewers of MSNBC often will just sit there going, yeah, right on, exactly, without stopping and saying, wait a moment. The second is called dart throwers bias. It's our tendency to notice outliers because of their obvious evolutionary significance as danger signals. We then tend to ignore or at least underestimate the ordinary as background noise. The name of the bias comes from imagining that you're in a pub and there's a darts game going on. Nobody's playing that you know. You have no particular reason to watch the darts game. And the question is, when would you notice it? The answer, of course, is when something extraordinary happens, like one of the players makes a bullseye or one of the players misses the dartboard entirely and impales the bartender in the forehead. The ordinary throws, the kind that any of us could make, mostly go unnoticed. Well, we thought the dart thrower's bias was more built into our cognitive processes, and that confirmation bias was more on the surface, something that we are or should be more aware of. Now, it appears that confirmation bias might be as hardwired into our brains as dart thrower's bias is. A paper recently appeared in the journal Human Communications Research. It describes research by Jason Coronel of Ohio State University. Coronel, along with Shannon Polson and Matthew Schweitzer, did a fascinating set of experiments that showed that not only do we tend to accept without question things that fit with our preconceived biases, we also tend to misremember things that disagree with us, and in fact, misremember it in such a way that it appears to confirm our biases. What Coronel and his team did was present 110 volunteers with various bits of information about social issues. Some of the passages were about issues that, at least from the polls, most people seem to agree with, like the idea of support for same-sex marriages. Other passages contained information that, while true, is widely thought to be untrue, such as the fact that illegal immigration across the Mexican border has been dropping for years and, in fact, is right now at its lowest level since the 1990s. Across the board, regardless of their political affiliations, people tended to remember correctly the information that agreed with their preconceived notions, and to remember the, the information that disagreed incorrectly. Further, when the people got to the unexpected information, the researchers had high-speed cameras trained on their eyes, and they found that people hesitated when they hit that bit of information, as if they were sitting there thinking, wait, there's something strange about this such as when readers got to the passage that said that illegal immigration had been at about 12.8 million in 2007, and in 2014 had dropped to 11.7 million. People's eyes bounced back and forth between the numbers as if they really weren't convinced that they were reading it correctly. So even though people spent longer reading the information that was unexpected, they tended to remember it more poorly. People, in fact, sometimes remember the numbers, 12.8 million and 11.7 million, but then got them backwards as if it actually supported what they thought. If that's not bad enough, Coronel and his team then did a second set of experiments, where instead they had one volunteer read the passage with the unexpected information and then tell it to another volunteer, who would then tell it to another volunteer and so forth and so on. Remember the elementary school game of telephone? What they found was that once again, the numbers flipped to conform with what most people think is correct, and it usually did it on the first transfer. Worse still, on subsequent transfers, the difference between the two numbers got bigger and bigger, as if the situation was even worse than people thought. This gives you an idea of what we're up again in trying to counter disinformation campaigns. It also shows that my own preconceived notion that dart throwers bias was somehow built in and confirmation bias was more deliberate, really isn't correct. Both of them are built into our neurology. Why our brains are built this way is a matter of conjecture. It may have to do with our tribal heritage, that fitting in with the tribal norm is more important than being the maverick who sticks to his gun and clings to an unpopular opinion. That's pure speculation, of course, but what it does illustrate is that our very brains are working against us in trying to counter fake news. And these days, that's positively frightening considering how many people are coldly and calculatedly disseminating false information in order to maintain their positions of power in order to anger us or in order to frighten us. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up. Our resources are down there, and please subscribe to our channel. Thank you.